Hello, it's Dana with NVIDIA's Deep Learning Institute. I'm going to share with you how to set up your Jetson Nano Developer Kit with Jetpack for the very first time. Once you do that, you'll be able to download and install Docker containers and run lots of applications, including the projects for the free DLI course, Getting Started with AI on Jetson Nano. Let's get started. The original Jetson Nano Developer Kit looks like this or like this B01 version that came out more recently. They're very similar, but the B01 has two CSI camera ports instead of one, and the jumper location for the barrel power supply is in a slightly different location to accommodate that second CSI port. And now, there is another. This Jetson Nano 2GB developer kit just arrived. This is the one I'm going to set up right now. The 2GB version does look a little different. It has 2GB of RAM instead of 4GB, and there are some differences in the ports. Let's take a look side by side. Both have a micro USB port and Ethernet. The 2GB has three USB-A ports. Both have HDMI. Oh, here's something quite different. Instead of a barrel power port, the 2GB has a USB-C port for power. We'll be able to plug in everything we need for setup. There are two main steps in the setup. Step one, flash the operating system onto an SD card with your computer. Step two, Move the SD card onto your Nano and configure the operating system. Here we go with step one. You need a computer with an internet connection and an SD card writer, plus a micro SD card. These micro SD cards come in many sizes. I'm using a 64 gigabyte card so that I have plenty of room to store apps and data. The micro SD card looks like this but usually comes with an adapter so that you can flash it in a larger slot. Slide it in and it's ready to flash. Okay, so we've got the card, but we need the Jetpack image to burn onto it and we need the software that allows us to flash. So that's what we'll do next. I'm here on the Jetson Nano Developer Kit site, and there's lots of great information here for me. Uh, technical specifications, all sorts of user guides, and some videos and blogs. But what I'm looking for right now is the Jetpack SDK. That's where I'll find the image that I need to download. So I'll click over to that. And we can see that we have the latest version is right up here on top. That's what we want, the latest version. And that there are a few different methods for installing Jetpack depending on what your Jetson is. So for the SD card image method, which is what we're using, there's one right here for the Jetson Nano Developer Kit, and that's what we want. Now, in the future, I think you will see another one here. Uh, there's the Jetson Nano 4GB, and there's the Jetson Nano 2GB and those should have different SD card images. But even though I have the Jetson <laughs> Nano 2GB that I've already shown to you, I'm a little early to the party and it's not here yet. So I'm going to show you how to do this with just the regular Jetson Nano Developer Kit download and burn, and the process is exactly the same. So the first thing we do is download the SD card image. Just click the button, and we'll determine where we want to save it. I'm going to put it on my desktop to make things easy and save it. And if you look down here, which you probably can't see very well, but it says that it's a six gigabyte uh, file. So this is going to take a while, depending on your download speed. If you have one gigabyte, it won't take too long. But if you're like me and it's less than that, it may take a while and you might want to go have dinner or just explore for a while on the internet. Let's go ahead and explore this page uh, and see how we're, how we're doing. Okay, so also on this page, it shows the features of Jetpack. So let's just go through that a little bit. The operating system, this includes the L4T and some number 
I'm going to make a note of this because this 32.4.3 in this case is going to tell me what the operating system version is. And I think I'm going to need that later when I try to match it with Docker files and things like that I want to download. So I'm going to go ahead and make a note of that even though uh, I could find that out later, but uh, I'll, I'll want to keep track of that. Okay, in addition to the operating system, there's TensorRT, which optimizes inference when you're doing deep learning and, and um, a lot of video things. And there's the QDNN, CUDA, uh, Multimedia API, Computer Vision, Developer Tools. There's really a lot in here, and these are, these are great libraries that are going to be useful to you as you build your own applications which we can't wait to see what you come up with. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show you here is next to the download, there's this little link that says Getting Started with Jetson Nano Developer Kit. And these steps, if we click on here, this provides the instructions, uh, starts right off with the write to the micro SD card, which is what we're going to be doing. So there's different instructions here given for Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm gonna be using Windows, but you could click on Mac for Mac, Linux for Linux. Let's see what Windows has. For Windows, I'm going to need to download two different applications. The first is the SD card formatter. And this is how I'll go ahead and format my SD card the first time. And the second one is Etcher. Etcher uh, by Belina, Belina Etcher, is uh, a utility for flashing SD cards. And the Mac and the Linux also have versions of Belina Etcher. So this is that part's going to be the same regardless of your system. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Hmm, still a ways to go. Why don't we just fast forward? The image download is complete. My SD card is in the slot. And I've also downloaded the SD card formatter and the Etcher. So I'll go ahead and format the card. Yes, I do want to do that. And here's the card is in my D slot. Just take a quick look, make sure I don't format something I don't want to format. And quick format, yes. There we go. And it's done. Good. Next thing I want to do is open up the etcher. Flash from file or flash from URL? Well, I downloaded the file, so that's what I want. Choose the only one that's on my desktop, because that's where I put it, and the only SD card, and flash. Sure you want to do this? Yes, I really, really do. Starting. This will take a little bit, so we'll be back. On to step two, configuring the operating system on the Nano. I'll take the flash card and put it in the Nano. The metal part should be pointing up and in. Slide it into the slot and push it until you feel a subtle click. There are two ways to do this part. One is headless, which means by logging in remotely, and the other is graphical. For the graphical method, we need a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. So I'm temporarily using my main system monitor, keyboard, and mouse just for setup. I won't need it later. If you don't have these devices available, you can still set up your system using headless mode with a few extra steps. More information on headless configuration can be found in the DLI course. Now I'll power it up using a USB-C 5.1 volt 3 amp power supply. Okay, I have booted up the Nano and the first thing I have is a question about the license. And you can look at the license, scroll through it, check, check if there's anything that you need to know about that and click I accept. Continue. I'm going to choose English and in fact um, U.S. English, U.S. English, and time zone. I think I'll choose the Pacific Coast.
and a name. Well, I'm going to put NVIDIA just all across the board because it's easy for me to remember. It's, it's a weak password, but I'm going to do it anyway. And this shows the size. It's going to expand to the full card size. That's what we want. Continue. And this is going to take a few minutes, probably four or five minutes. Here we go. It's going to reboot. This is a lightweight desktop. It's coming up. NVIDIA, and there it is. Okay, first thing I want to do, I think, is maybe open a terminal. And I'm going to check and see what the swap looks like. We need a four gigabyte swap to do some of our deep learning exercises later. So let's see what's there. Well, the swap is, says uh, it's about one gigabyte, and we want four gigabytes. So I'm going to have to change that. We've got a few commands here that I'm going to have to do. This is a kind of geeky, and with your setup, you may be able to just tell it right out that you want four gigabytes. Okay, first I'm going to disable the ZRAM. Okay, I have to put in some commands here to allocate the 4GB for the swap. And what this is going to allow me to do is, since we're only using a two gigabyte RAM, if we have four gigabytes available on the, the card for it to swap back and forth with, it'll seem like it's a larger RAM space. It'll be slower than RAM, but it'll get the job done. Okay, one more step. We need to add something to the slash etc slash fs tab. Um, go to the end and add this one little line. This information will all be uh, available to you in the course information. But hopefully you won't have to do all of this every time. Okay, I'm going to add the mount swap and set the defaults to zero, zero, and close it up. Okay, now I'm set, colon, WQ to close. And let's check the free again. Free-M, that shows megabytes. And it looks like we still only have one gigabyte. I wonder why. Well, I think I need to reboot. Let's do that. Reboot solves all kinds of things. Try again. There it is. Swap is now four gigabytes, just the way we set it up, and that's going to make things better for our deep learning projects. Great. We're all done setting up the basic Jetson Nano system. Now you can either continue using the monitor, keyboard, and mouse, or disconnect them and use SSH instead in order to install additional applications and Docker containers for your system. Now be sure and sign up for the Getting Started with AI on Jetson Nano DLI course and do some cool projects using a webcam. To learn more, visit nvidia.com slash DLI or email us at nvdli at nvidia.com.